Welcome to the Bettendorf Public Library's Take Home Workshop. Today, we're going to be making these baskets out of rolled magazine pages. These are, it's a surprisingly sturdy little basket and they're great for decorative items or for storage. You could do like a series of them for your pens and your pencils and your other office supplies. A lot of uses for these. And they're super easy to make and I like it because it's a recycled craft. So we're going to be doing a little upcycling today. In your kit, you're going to find a portion of a magazine. Um, I like to use like travel and food magazines, anything that has a lot of really beautiful photography in it and lots of color. Um, but if you prefer a, a more um, monotone look, you could get something that is just print and then it, your, well, um, your basket is going to be all black and white. You're gonna have a roll of tape and you're gonna have a thin little dowel. And that's all we need to make this. Now optionally, and what you can provide is a method of cutting. We're going to be taking these pages and cutting them in half. So you can either fold and tear them or you can cut them if you'd like. So that's an optional one. And then also glue. This one is not glued and it's really solid, but if you want a little bit of extra insurance that your, that your um, basket is gonna stay in one piece, a little bit of glue to, to finish it off might be the ticket for you. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pages and we're going to cut them in half and we're gonna cut the binding off the edge. These, the glued part, we don't need that. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I have access to a paper cutter, which makes this go a lot faster, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these on our paper cutter and I will be right back. So we have our cut sheets. So all I did was I trimmed off the edge that had the glue from the binding, took that completely away and threw that out. Then I just cut the sheets roughly in half the long way. So for this particular magazine, these are about four inches wide. If your strips are not the exact same length, that's okay if they vary a little bit. I just kind of eyeballed it when I was cutting. Now we're gonna make our canes. And this is what we're going to make. We're basically making um, you know, the equivalent of a cane or a reed that we would use for basket weaving, but we're doing it out of paper. So we're gonna take our page, we're gonna look at and see which side do we want to be showing. Now this is not going to be showing in its entirety. Nobody's going to be able to tell that these are pork chops when we're done with this. But this has a little bit more color, so I'm gonna have this on the outside. To roll it up, you take your dowel, and we wanna roll at about, a 23 degree angle, which is like super specific and not what I'm all about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay down my paper. My dowel is at perpendicular to the edge. You cut that in half and now it's 45, cut that in half again. And that's about the angle we want. And again, this is not, this is, it doesn't matter if it's precise. So we're gonna take, we're gonna tuck that in and we're gonna roll. You want it snug, but not too tight, because if it's too tight, it's really hard to get the dowel out. So I'm just gonna keep rolling until I get down to the end here and I have this little tail, and then I'm going to get my tape going. Take a piece of tape and just tape that down. and then slide my dowel out. So that is my first read. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna do, well, a whole bunch more. How many you do obviously depends on how big you want your basket to be. Because what we're going to do is we're going to um, put these end to end. As you roll, you might notice that your beginning end is a little tighter, a little smaller in diameter than your finishing end, and that's what you want because you're going to slide these together to make longer canes as you go. The other thing you can do, you can do the same thing, um, switch out. You can do the same thing out of newspaper, and then you'll either have, again, a monochrome um, basket, or the newspaper takes color very well. So you could 
paint your canes with a watered down paint and you can make it any color you want. So I'm going so as you can see, nice and colorful, but you'd have to look really hard even in this day to see that that was a Friskies ad. And then um, when this is in the basket, you won't be able to tell at all. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to keep rolling these until I have enough. I'm going to start with about 40 or 45 and see how far that gets me. This is not a project that needs to be all done start to finish in one set. Um, you can get it started and then you can lay it down and you can come back later. Um, so it, it's kind of nice for that. I like projects that I can pick up later in case I get interrupted because who doesn't get interrupted when they're working on crafts? So I'm going to keep rolling these and I will be back to you when I have about 40 of them. So I have about 45 reeds here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some and I'm going to um, connect them together to make the, the base of my basket, the beginning where we're starting from. And I'm gonna make this, try and make that out of mostly white ones. We're gonna have a colorful basket here. Set those aside. So I need six, and I'm gonna make these long. It's, it is tempting to make all your reeds, connect all your reeds um, into a very long reed. And that's, it, that makes them unwieldy. But let me show you how to connect them. So you, this end is a little bit thinner. This was my beginning end. And on this read, this was my closing end. So I'm just gonna slide one right in the other. And they fit in there nice and snug. But I am still going to take a little piece of tape and just wrap it around there. Just to keep it really secure. So, purple one getting there. So I'm gonna do that with these ones the thin end into, and sometimes they don't necessarily want to go. <laughs> sometimes your ends are about the same size, but if you just kind of mess around with them, you'll get it. So for our base, I need six. Of these long pieces. Another nice thing about this craft is that how easy it is to size. So if you want to, um, we're gonna be making a basket about this size, but you could make it much, much larger. Um, you could do it with longer strips of paper. I saw someone who did it with newspaper and they ended up with um, a basket that was like a wastebasket size. And I've seen baskets that are um, a little bit like taller than mine. I need one more strip. Let's see here, white. So kind of that same diameter, but taller that make really good pencil holders. So anywhere where you would use a basket, you could use something like one of these baskets. Okay, so we have six reeds. And we're going to lay three down and then three across. And this is gonna be our base. Now I'm gonna take another couple and join them. This is about as long of a read as I would wanna work with, two pages together. You can, I mean, you can try doing more, but for me, it just got really unwieldy pretty quickly. And then this one we're gonna fold in half. Just like that. We're gonna slide it underneath our three, three of our base reeds. Let me get those out of there just to show you what I'm doing here. So we're just sandwiching the three base reeds in the middle of this folded reed. I'm gonna bring our other three base reeds back in. And we're gonna start building. 
I'm gonna take the bottom of the folded reed and I'm gonna fold it up over the top. So it's going to be a 90 degree fold. It's going to go over your three top ones. And I'm gonna take the top one and bring it under the bottom and do the same thing where it's a 90 degree. So basically, it's wrapped around our bottom base and then given a little twist and it comes around the top of the base. Then I'm going to turn this 90 degrees and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring the bottom, bend it across the top, bring the top and bring it across the bottom. Now, since this is the bottom of our basket, we'd like it to be as snug as possible. We don't want in this case, I don't want a very loose weave basket. You might, if you like that look, go for it. And we're gonna turn 90 degrees again and do the same thing. So the top is, or the bottom's gonna come across the top and the top is gonna go to the bottom. And this is basically the whole premise of this basket is weaving top to bottom, bottom to top. Top to bottom bottom to top, and we're going to go around at least twice. Now you see my reeds are starting to get pretty short, so I can add some new ones in. So I'm just going to slide in a new one. There we go. And this is one that doesn't want to go in real snug. Well, maybe I've got the wrong end there. Let's try the other end. Let's try the wide end. Oh, much better. Look at that. And then again, I'm going to run tape around these. Now, once you get into the weaving of this, if you want to forego the tape on your joints, you probably can without... Um, sacrificing much strength. Um, but you are going to be kind of pulling on these, so I would recommend still doing it. Okay, so now I've, I've extended these two reeds and I'm just gonna keep going. So bottom to the top and top to the bottom. You could use glue instead of tape. I think it would be difficult. You're gonna have to either, you're gonna have to, oh, see, look, I didn't, oh no, I just actually broke my reed, but that's okay. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Oh, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't tape it in the right place. So you can use glue, but then you have to wait for your glue to dry before you can do much of anything. You could use hot glue, but hot glue has quite a bit of bulk to it. So it's gonna be, there we go. See, easy fix. Um, so hot glue is not going to be very um, good because it, it doesn't bend. It has so much bulk to it. It's gonna add unnecessary bulk to your basket and then and where your joints are, it's gonna make it hard for them to bend. So let's see. Okay, once you've gone around twice or so, I think I may have lost count. Now we're going to start building our side spokes. And these, uh, what is that, 12 that are sticking out, those are going to be the reeds that come up the side of our basket. So this time we're going to separate out one and we're going to do our bottom and our top against that one. So now we've got one that's kind of sticking out at an odd angle. These two we're gonna keep together, but we're gonna do that same bottom top weave, making sure that stays snug. Then here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do one. Take it over the top and underneath.
and two again. And then you can see, I'm gonna extend my canes. And then with our last set of three, we're going to do the same thing. So now we've been all the way around and we've separated out one cane from each bunch of free three. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to separate these two. And here's where I think it starts to get a lot easier. So we're going to go bottom. Basically, you put it over, you give them a twist, put the next reed through. Now that you're just doing one reed at a time, it's just a little twist in between each reed. As I'm going, I'm snugging these in here as much as I can so that my basket has a nice, oops, forgot to twist on that one. It has a nice snug base. If at any point in the process you do get interrupted, just grab something like a binder clip or a clothespin and clip it wherever you left off and you'll be able to, it'll hold all your tension, hold everything in place and you'll be able to come back to it at a later date. Okay, and we're down to our last couple that haven't been separated yet. So we twist, and run that through, and twist, and run that through. Okay, so we've been all the way around the base once, and now all of our reeds, all of our beginning reeds that are going to be our vertical supports, they are all separated. And now we just keep going the way we were going, where we're going to be doing, taking these two reeds, the ones we're working with, and we're going to give them a twist, slide a reed between them, and twist, and slide a reed between them. We're going to keep doing that until our base is the size that we want it to be. For this one, I'm gonna make it not as big around as this one, and I'm going to try and make it taller. So, I think this is about as big of a base as I want on this one, so I'm gonna start my sides. And to do that, you just bend your reeds up like this, and you keep going with your twist 
But now instead of working out this way, we're gonna work up this way. So I'm gonna twist and bend my reed up and twist and bend my reed up. And you can see already how quickly this is going to grow. And again, as I'm going, the, the reeds that I'm twisting, I'm pushing them down between, we'll call these our spokes, how's that? Between our spokes so that our basket stays nice and tight. Increase the size of our reeds. And you do get to a point, as you can see, where you don't even have to really clip it if you have to let go. Just friction holds it together, which is kind of nice. I could get up and go get myself a drink of some water or something like that if I want to. So I'm gonna keep doing this, where I'm twisting and bring my reed up. You want to try and manipulate your, your vertical reeds, your spokes, so that they are fairly evenly spaced around your basket. If you do this as you're building, you have, like in this, as you're building this first layer, you have some flexibility in where you, um, where these spokes go. Okay, so I've got all my spokes going up. I have my first row around the base done, and I'm gonna go through and squeeze that down so it's nice and tight. And I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm going to keep extending my canes and just weaving. Twist and put the spoke in, twist, put the spoke in, weaving back and forth until it's the height that I want. So as I'm finishing up my last row here, my last set of canes, Um, it occurred to me that you might be wondering why we didn't use full magazine pages. And I will be honest with you, I tried that first. I had a beautiful magazine with thick, glossy pages and glorious color photographs, and I did it full pages, and those reeds ended up being so sturdy that I couldn't bend them. So you do need to, if you're not using like a standard magazine, like what we're doing in this kit, if you want to recreate this with newspaper or something else, you might want to play around a little bit with your, um, with the size of the sheets that you're rolling. You need them to be firm, I guess would be a good word for it, but not so rigid that you can't bend them. Okay, so I've gone through probably about 45 reeds. And my bass is a little bit torn skin here. Now you can see where I pulled things a little bit tighter at the top um, so that it has kind of a, an interesting shape. Um, it is not what I planned, but I actually like it. I find it kind of pleasing. So I'm not going to worry about that. So once we're at our top now, I'm going to take and as I get down to the tail end of my reed, I'm just going to bring that around, let's see if I can show you, to the inside, fold it down, and then I'm going to tuck the end, let's get all these spokes out of the way, I'm going to tuck the end down inside and underneath one of the reeds on the inside of the basket. This can be a little tricky to do, and what I found was using our dowel is very helpful. So if you slide the dowel in there underneath, and depending on how tight you weave your basket, this might be easy, this might be difficult, but I make a space and then I'm gonna take my reed and I'm gonna slide it in there 
alongside the dowel. So I'm just making a space for that reed and I didn't make a space in the right place. Make a space for that reed. Yeah, these are really tight. I did a good job there. Okay, make a space for that reed and slide it underneath there. And if you have something else like a pencil or a pen that you can stick that down there alongside the reed, that might help. Okay, so I got it down there. I'm gonna pull my, make sure that stays in, pull my reed out and pull that snug as tightly as I can. Now, this is where if you're not confident in the security of your reed, you could do a little dot of glue there. You could probably do a little bit of tape there too. Even if it's just temporary, we're gonna put a little piece of tape there to hold that in place. So that's my first one. Now this is the second reed that I've been using to build walls. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring it around the outside of this spoke, bring it in and bring it down. I'm gonna make a space for it again using my dowel. Just getting the dowel underneath one of the reeds. And sliding this alongside of it. And I'm gonna use my pen to poke it all the way through. if I can. Tweezers would probably be helpful here too to help you grab that tail end there if you have one of those. But it just takes a little persistence. And maybe a couple of tries. that tight and pull our reed out. So you probably couldn't see what I did there, but what I ended up doing was taking the end of the reed and wrapping it around the um, head of my pen here. So it was actually pushing it through kind of nice and snug. So there's that. Now we're going to take our spokes and do the same sort of thing where we're going to wrap it around the spoke next to it, fold it in, and bring it down. Now, these are longer than I need them to be, so I'm going to give them a little bit of a trim, not too much. It, it's tempting to cut them off kind of short to make them a little easier to work with, but then you don't have enough of a tail to um, secure them. So I'm gonna just cut these about in half. So I still have a tail of several inches, and I'm gonna go around and do that with all of these guys. Give it a little haircut. So I'm gonna, this is the last reed that I just um, secured. So I'm gonna take this spoke I'm gonna bring it around the outside of the spoke next to it. Fold it down into the basket and secure it again in just the same way. I'm gonna make a hole for it. I'm gonna make a space for it. 
underneath one of the reeds that are on the inside of the basket. And I'm going to, I lost it, tuck that reed down and into that space alongside the dowel. Move that one in nice and easy. Make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure my spoke. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this spoke. I'm going to wrap it around the outside of the spoke to the side. Next one down. And I'm going to make a space if I can. If this one's so tight. There we go. So we're going to fold it around the outside. Bring it inside the basket and down and secure that end underneath one of those reeds. We're just going to keep going around doing that for each one. Oh, look at this guy. Because I cut it off, he's starting to unroll. So we know that ultimately we'll need to tuck that down. So I'm just going to tape him back up again. Now yeah, there's a couple of them because I cut them. We just need to tighten up those rolls and give them a little. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty forgiving. I mean, the, the paper is, while pretty stiff, it's also malleable enough that you can bend it and fold it a little bit to help maintain the shape that you want. And it'll, you can repair any errors that you want. So I'm gonna keep going with this, making sure that these ends get tucked in underneath, nice and tight and snug as I can get them. And we're going to go all the way around doing each one of these spokes. Once you've got your ends all tucked in at the top there, you can do a little reshaping with your hands. There is some malleability there, but for the most part, you are done. So you have a little basket there. Now, Learn from my mistakes. I did cut some of my reeds too short when I trimmed those off on the top and it made it really tricky to get these tucked in. So um, if your reeds are real long, I would recommend giving them a little bit of a trim, taping those edges down again, but be real careful how you do that because if you get it too short, it's very difficult to secure. If you do this with newspaper, um, you could do like a very large basket. If you're gonna do a very large basket, you're gonna start with more canes across the bottom. Um, we started with three and three. You might wanna do more than that, depending on how big your bottom's going to be. Um, you also might wanna seal it. You could spray it with a poly spray or something like that. But there you have your rolled magazine baskets. I have a nice little set now for my desk. Um, I want to thank, I want to, first of all, I want to see the baskets that you guys make. I want to see how you make them and I want to see how they turn out. I want to see what you're going to do with them. And I also want to thank the Bettendorf Public Library Foundation and Quad City Bank and Trust for sponsoring this take-home workshop.